Amen. I'm just preaching now. If it belongs to God and we belong to God, why don't we forget about these here houses that these fellows got these inks, pens sticking, you put all this stuff on. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't like one the doctor sticks in there, much less somebody else. You know what? I had to go to the doctor this week. I ain't standing in church Wednesday night because I'm not a whiner. I trust God. I had three places on my left side of the face, Doug can tell you, was cancer. And I mean, this whole jaw Wednesday night was red, and you rub your hand on it, it was rough and hurt and burnt. Sister Debbie, I called my doctor, and I thank God for the doctor that I've got. One of the finest. I believe he's ever been in Morgan. He said, come on over. And I went over and he said, no, I'll take care of that. And he went back there and got this machine. And you've seen how my forehead stayed black for a while. You don't see no black, do you? The next day it washed off. Amen. Oh, come on, amen. I'm amen. talking about, he said, the heavens are thrown. The earth's my footstool. You're my children. Why can't you believe him? Why can't you trust? People say, I love the Lord. Well, why don't you believe him? Amen. He'll do anything you ask him according to his will. Woo! Ain't that right, my brother? Amen. Amen. If you're according to his will. You know, Brother Lance, if I read the Bible right, and there's a wonderful message you preached when I appreciate that. But I'm going to tell you something. We're his creation. We're his people. When we were born to the flesh, we belonged to mom and daddy. But I want to tell you that night that the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost of God come in and filled our heart and saved us and cleansed us from this world of sin. We become a uh, property of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and brother, you better serve Him and not the world. Amen. amen. Woo! Lord, I feel like Steve preaching now. Amen. Amen. Now listen to what he says. Where is the house? Where is the house? That doctor come in there and he said, uh, place on the right side of your face is not ready yet. And I said, hey, it'll leave and them does. And it's gone. Amen. Thank you, Lord. My wife was getting worried about it and I appreciate that. Amen. Because I know I saw a fellow one time, uh, what was his, uh, Wiley and his wife, and it wasn't Wiley Center, but you know, you used to come in, she played the piano. Shirley and Wiley, and uh, they lived, Darnell, they lived across the room from this guy that had cancer on this side of his face, and it done eat in there, and when you go over, see him pull a rag back and look like maggots eating in it. And the side of his head, they had to take off part of his nose, part of his mouth, and all that. And I don't know if the fellow ever went to church. I, amen. They just didn't believe Brother Lance, I guess, in going to church. It ain't all coming here to church. But this is where the Bible says that we are together like some do. And we ought to come when we come believing. Brother Ben sitting back there is a good example. He is sitting over there about where Harold is one Sunday. And his army couldn't pick it up. And he said, well, ain't no use for me to go up there and worry that preacher. God can do it. And he left, didn't it, Ben? Amen. Well, preacher, what are you talking about? You don't have to have the preacher to pray for you. You don't have to have somebody else to pray for you. All you've got to do in your heart and your soul is to believe that Jesus Christ died, hung on Calvary, rose out of the third day, thank God, and seat the right hand of the Father waiting on you to ask Him, please help me, and God will do it, amen. amen. Woo! I've got this fine house Now that's the house God wants, amen. Alive. Amen. amen. For all those things have mine hand made, and all those things have been said, the Lord, but to this man will I look even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and tremble, tr tremble at thy word. I'm going to ask you something. You ever been sitting on the banks in here? Now, if it, I'm going to ask you a real good simple question. And you felt God real good. The Holy Ghost just made you tremble all over. Well, I saw Tim Smith have a fit back there one night. He couldn't stand still. He stood straight up and hollered cool. Amen. That's what he's talking about, Tim. Amen. Talking about that Holy Spirit, that Holy Ghost. This brother coming here a while back, 
He said, Preacher, well, God's got a hold of you. Pray for me. And he left here shouting. And he told me to shout the whole way home. Amen. Amen. Woo. Amen. Ain't no use to be ashamed of it. Come on. Dale Amen. Earnhardt win a race. They're going to haul. Woo, woo, woo. Oh, I love Dale. Well, forget Dale. I love God. And I like to shout for him. Amen. 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 Not that you may not know it, but I believe Dale Earnhardt done his son out of that. Only time I ever done him a racing, and he walked down the track with his wife holding her hand before the race in the first round, he got killed. We don't know, brother, when we're going to leave. But there's one thing about it. We better be ready, Charlie, when Jesus comes. Amen. And he's coming. Amen. He's coming. Preacher, when's he coming? I don't know, but he's coming. Are you sure of that? Yeah, I'm sure, Lance. Ain't you, Lance? Amen. I'm sure he's coming. And when he comes, man, Lance is preaching to be over, and he'll take over. Amen. Woo. Amen. Boy, mercy. I'm sure that I'm ready. Amen. I'm sure that's why he's keeping me going and twisting me around. Amen. Amen. Amen, Charlie. Appreciate that. Verse 3. He that killed the knock. Is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificed the lamb, as if he cut off a dog's neck. Did I read that right? Yeah. He that offendeth and a lawyer, as if he offered swine blood. He that burneth incense, as if he blessed an idol. If they have chosen their own way, and their own soul delighted in their abominations. I'm not going to delight to nobody and tell nobody and let me people say, so you think I'm one of the finest preachers I have had spoken to me about this one thing, and I will say it. And I didn't say it, they did. They said, Preacher Michael, you are one of the few that's still preaching the old-time gospel. Well, I count that a blessing, amen. Sister Dan Porter, he said, that's a testimony for them without, for them that's within. And amen. I'm glad that I can stand for God. I, do, I told uh, uh, Brother Tink this morning we were talking, uh, we don't have nothing to lose. Amen. amen. we got it all to gain because uh, if we stand up for God, we don't have to go along with somebody because they sin, because somebody drinks a beer. A lot of people say, I'll tell you this right there while I'm at it. God laid on my heart. Dennis Hensley, some of you know him, big guy, preached church years ago. But Sunday morning at Colorado's church, he was there. And I'd never met him. But when they started to sing and preaching, I heard somebody say, Oh God, somebody help me, I'm going to hell and I don't want to. That old cowboy boots on, he come devil walking across the top of the bank and didn't do it. Just a fly, and he said, please, somebody pray for me. I need God. Well, old Dennis fell that altar, and he got saved. Amen. He went home. You know Dennis? Yes, uh, he went home. Me and Dennis have been friends for years and since he got saved. And old Dennis went home, and there was uh, six boys in a the car there with two cases of beer. And they always come over every Sunday and drunk their beer and had a good time together. Then he said, well, you can take your beer back with you. I switched fountains this morning. <laughs> Amen. And he said he didn't have many visitors after that. No, when you get rid of sin and want to live for God, they don't want nothing to do with you. All right, let me finish you while I'm at it. In Sunday school one Sunday morning, Dennis and his wife sitting there, and, and he said, punch Gail. Gail punched him and says, Gail's wife, you know her too, I know. And punched him and said, Dennis, get up and tell him, tell him, Dennis, tell him. Why? He said, tell him what? He said, tell him what the Lord told you. Dennis got up at 1 o'clock in the morning when that night God called him to preach. He went out to the barn and laid two bales of hay down. I can take you where he lived. And they put the two bales of hay down and said, now God, if you call me to preach, tell my wife about it. And she said, the Lord told me he had called you to preach and for me to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Ain't that what he said? But she's sitting there. Amen. Then still pastoring a, a big church up in Nebo. We went up there and helped him along a little while I wasn't a pastor. 
But what I'm saying is, when God turns you around, you ain't the same person. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You are made new from the top of your head to the soul of your feet. Amen? Well, glory to God. I had somebody say here a while back, I didn't think, yeah, I went to a cafe down 64 and it was about a, two, what, maybe two or three years ago and I walked in the door and everybody's eyes got big said, well, they told me you died. I said, I did about 50 years ago. When I went to the altar, I died from sin, friends, and I'm still alive. Well, preacher, they told me they buried you. You're dead. I said, well, here I is. <laughs> I go in there once in a while just to the baby. Because I'm the dead, raised, uh, raised from the dead, I'm alive. Amen. Are you happy and you know it? Amen. Amen. And also, verse 4, and also will choose their decisions, their <coughs> delusions. Thank you. And will bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and choose that it which I delighted not. A lot of people say I saw a person here one back. Well I preached for 40 years and I retired and I, I've done my part. 67 year old. And I said, wait just a minute, brother. I always thought a lot of you. I got four Bibles out there in the truck. Let me go get one of them and you tell me and show me in our word that we can never do our part for God Almighty. We'll never. Listen, you're sitting here today and you might have served the Lord all uh, the days that you've been saved 30, 20, 40 years or whatever, but you still ain't never touched the brim of what we owe Him for what He's done for us. Amen. 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 I'm just preaching what the Lord said. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at His word. <laughs> I tell you right now, like I said, I went into one of the stores in Morgan here a while back, I believe it was Roses, and a woman in there said, oh, oh let me get over here on that other lane. He said, I come Preacher Michael. He'd be all over me because I don't go to church. I said, you better not worry about Preacher Michael. You better worry about the man called Jesus. Amen. Lance, is that the man going to judge us? Hey, Amen. And Preacher Michael was just telling you you ought to come. And I want to say while I'm right there, Rule Buchanan, good friend of mine, he's still living. His wife Mary died a while back. And I had a feeling that I need to go to the Depot Cafe in Glen Elfin one morning. And I went over there, and Mary was uh, one of our members when I pastored River Valley years ago. Her and Rule was the deacon. And hadn't seen them in years. And she sat over on the bench, and she wouldn't come over and speak to me, and wouldn't sit with me. And I said, Mary... Come over here and sit with me a few minutes and I'd like to talk to you. I hadn't seen you in a long time. What will people think? And I just stood up in the cafe and I said, Hey, a lot of you know me. I'm preacher Mike. And this Mary Buchanan. She's going to come over and sit and we're going to talk. You ain't going to run your mouth. We're running around, are you? <laughs> oh, preacher, you didn't do it. You ought to been there. <laughs> and she comes over and sit with me. And I said, Mary... You need to get back in church. I, I, well, I preacher, I don't have time for God and church no more. Listen to me. I don't have time for church and God no more. I've got a dress store and a bingo game down at Raiders Cafe at Drexel. And I don't have time for church and God no more. And I said, you better take time. He's coming after you. Two weeks. He called me. Mary fell dead. She had time then. Come on now. Yeah. Amen. You say, preacher, what are you trying to say? God sent me there to warn her. Yeah. Come on. Lance, every time you tell somebody come to your music shop or whatever about Jesus or on the job or out in town or wherever, you give out a warning. And if they don't listen, it's not Lance, it's them that stands before God. Amen. Amen. Well, glory to God. Their son helps my son-in-law uh, there in Timber Bennett's, and when Tim needs help, that boy will help him. 
And uh, to him, asked him if he knows me, and he said, Lord, yeah, I was a little bitty fellow. But Preacher Michaels is our pastor. And I meet a lot of people that I've known all through the years. And I expect Brother Doug, I'll meet them throughout the ages. And I hope to meet some of you, not only here, but in heaven, when Amen. Jesus comes back to the church. Amen. 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 So the, why don't we listen to what he said? The Lord said, it ain't hard Michael saying, it, it's the word of God, David said. Me and Louise, they had a movie on TV last night. They're going to have one every night this week called Easter. And they had on there about Esther. Did I get her name right? And I want to tell you, I said he was sitting there and told Louise, and when they got done in Esther, it was the Bible. The whole of it was the Bible. They wasn't no junk. It was the Bible. Like Tim Smith said, it was facts. And I told Louise, I said, did you see there? A lot of people have better wish to be glad that they wasn't born and raised under the law, but to live under grace and God has mercy. Amen. 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 You say, uh, Mary was telling me a while ago and said, Jimmy, like about that much. Ain't that the way you put him, Mary? Of getting saved last night. I said, Mary, does that tell you something what the Bible said? King Agrippa, Paul told him, told Paul, he said, Thou almost persuade me to be a Christian. Wouldn't it be awful to be that close to heaven's door and die overnight and go to hell? But you don't have to go to hell. Listen to me. Now, Rita, get us a song. You don't have to go to hell. You don't have to go to hell. Help me say it. You do not have to go to hell. Because Jesus paid the price, gave his life, gave us a chance. And here we are. You know what? You say, I tell you, you never done it. God said, Jesus chose you. Amen. Amen. And when he chooses us, then we, like a Jim said, I asked him, like, just teased him this morning. Jim, did you get saved like now? He said, I had to repent. That's the idea. You can be saved one time, but you've got a lot of repenting to do. While we stand, while we sing, that's a message. I hope you got something out.